Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went, to be, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child.
firstborn son, and wrap him in bands of cloth, and lay him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Fourth reading today is Luke 
uh, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy of all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, pressing God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord had made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured this all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, many thanks to all of our readers this morning and uh, for and to you to the congregation for excellent singing through our uh, our carols and readings uh, portion of the service now if you would uh, join me in prayer lord you have given us your word as a light to shine upon our path grant us so to meditate on that word and to follow its teaching that we may find it that we may find in it the light that shines more and more until that perfect day through Jesus Christ our lord amen the truth is that we're all a little bit afraid of the dark darkness disconcerts us Darkness confuses us. We, um, we made a recent trip to the UK uh, earlier this month. And um, you know how from Hong Kong you leave at midnight, fly to, to London, and you arrive very early in the morning, five o'clock we arrived, and of course it was dark. That was okay. We knew that the sun would come up, and it did. But see, the thing is then, that day you have to stay awake all day until bedtime, right? Many of you have done this. So that was fine. Uh, the sun did come up, not as early as we had hoped. And the day went on, and um, it started to get dark. And we thought, yeah, that's okay, we're getting tired. And then we looked at our watches, and it was three o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon. And that was disconcerting. And by 3.45, 4 o'clock, it was dark. <sighs> we soldiered on. And by about six or seven o'clock, we were thinking, oh, that's got to be it. And we looked at our watches and thought, no, four more hours of darkness. It was too much darkness for that day. There's a lot of darkness in our world. Many of us uh, who live in Hong Kong will look back at 2019, this year that has just passed by, and we will say that that year, this year, has been a dark year. It has been a hard year. It has been a difficult year. And we have longed for the light in Hong Kong. But you know, here's the thing. In the past, um, it was really no picnic either. It wasn't all sunshine. 
the passage that I read at the very beginning of the service uh, from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah was speaking in the 8th century BC. He was speaking to the people of Judah in Jerusalem in that area. At that time, it was not good times for the people of Judah. The Assyrian Empire, a famously cruel, rapacious empire, was threatening the people of Judah. They had already invaded Syria and northern Israel. And the king of Judah at that time, King Ahaz, had seen the Assyrians approaching, and he had given up. He sold out. He asked for the protection of the Assyrians, and he gave them the very gold and silver from God's temple as a payment. Those were not good times for the people of Judah. At the time of Jesus' birth, and the, the other readings for, from uh, Luke 1 and 2, we, we hear about, of course, Quirinius was the governor of, of, of Syria. It all sounds rather orderly. But for the people of, of God, the Jewish people at that time, this was a time of oppression. They were under the boot heel of the Roman Empire, another cruel and rapacious empire. And they didn't like it. They would have seen it also as a time of darkness. Even if we live in really good times, even if the economy is great, um, there are no cruel empires on our borders, everything looks fine in the big picture, there is darkness in each of our lives. When we look at uh, Facebook or Instagram or, or other social media these days, we see sunshine from people's lives, don't we? We see, we see the best picture that people put forward. And we do that ourselves when we put up our own posts because we, we want people to think we're doing well. But in every life, in every post, behind that, there is some darkness in that person's life. There are problems, there are struggles, there are difficulties. We live in a world then where darkness is a reality. Day by day, month by month, year by year, era by era. And we ask, with so many people throughout history, what is the solution to that darkness? Well, the answer is easy. The solution is light. We crave light. Those who are in darkness crave the light. But what happens when you have really been someplace that is dark, when you have really been in the darkness, maybe when you've been in a cave or you've been out walking at night or maybe it's just first thing in the morning and the blinds are down and you've slept a little late, what happens when the light comes on. Is it comforting? No. The light, when it comes to us, actually can be shocking. Light surprises us. It shakes us. Light is beautiful, but light also reveals. It reveals the reality of our lives, and it reveals any lies that we have told about ourselves, to ourselves and perhaps to others. Light makes mercilessly clear the light in our lives, the predicament that we find ourselves in. Because this is the human predicament. We know deep in our souls that we were created to be vessels. We were created to be lamps. We were created to be filled with, to hold, and to shine forth a light that is not our own light. A light that comes to us from someplace else. A light that comes to us, ultimately, from God our Father. We are meant to be the vessels of God's very glory itself. But when that light shines, 
when it suddenly comes on in our lives, we see the reality. We see who and what we are. We see that we are broken vessels, that we are obscured, that we are imperfect, and that we cannot in any real and effective way hold and shine forth God's light on our own. And when we see that reality, we may actually find ourselves wishing again for the comfort, the relative comfort, of the darkness in which we can hide. Just as Ahaz, back in the 8th century BC, he, he sought the darkness. He sought the protection of his enemy. He hid, afraid in that darkness. So do we in our lives sometimes hide in that darkness. But the light that is seeking us, it is not just an earthly light. It is different. It is more powerful. It is not a created light. It is the very light of God's own glory. And the good news in Advent, at Christmas, every day of the year, is that God, in his plan, was not content to see us lying there, broken and obscured. He staged an intervention. The light of God himself has broken into our dark world. Not just to illuminate and to reveal and to lay bare who and what we really are. That had already happened. God's light had shone on the world in the, in the form of his law and his revelation to his people, and they realized their shortcomings. But 2,000 years ago, on one day, on one real day, a day that happened, a day that existed in our time, God's light broke through into our world in a very different and more powerful way. It broke through in the incarnation. That is, God the creator becoming the created. God the creator, the maker of those vessels, becoming a vessel himself. God, our father, our creator, becoming a human being just like us. The Apostle Paul looks back on this in Colossians, his letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verse 16. He says, For in him, that is, in Christ, all things in heaven and on earth were created. That is, Christ is the creator of our world, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, Everything in our world is his creation. All things have been created through him. But then here's the important two words, and for him. The world was not just created by Christ. It was created for Christ. That is, for Christ to become part of that world. To become the culmination of God's plan of redemption. Paul says to the Galatians, in chapter 4, verse 4, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman. It's as simple as that. God's plan of redemption was aimed toward that day. That day in Bethlehem, in which God's light broke into our world. That was the fullness of God, a fullness of time, the culmination of God's plan. It is this light, this light of God's glory, that is what the shepherds see. We read, you know, we, we hear the familiar words from uh, Luke, Luke chapter 2, and it's all very nice, you know, manger, um, you know, animals, we, the, the animals are always very cute. Um, and then we, this, 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 the scene shifts, the baby is born. Luke dispenses with that actually very quickly. You know, I'm sure Mary probably had more trouble than two verses worth. But uh, 
And then the scene shifts, doesn't it, to the shepherds. And we think, oh, angels in the sky, la, 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 glory, glory, glory. But it wasn't like that. Because the light that the shepherds saw, remember, the shepherds are in the dark, right? It's really dark out there in the fields watching the sheep. The shepherds, I mean, they're not expecting anything to happen. This is just another night in their boring job, you know, sheep, 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 day after day after day. This is not just a star. This is not just the sun or the moon. This is the very light of God's presence. This is the light of eternity. This is a light that is echoing, that is a reflection of the light of Jesus Christ himself coming into the world, breaking into the creation. And what happens to the shepherds? They are terrified, Luke tells us, because they see into the very presence of God himself. That is the light that breaks into the world. Eventually, of course, um, the angels say, well, yeah, look, um, shepherds, enough with the terror. This is actually good news. This light does not just reveal. This light does not just expose. This light does so much more. Because here is the good news. This light is the sign that the Savior has come. This baby that is born over there in that stable, you can go see him. You can go visit him because this is the day that he is born. You can go visit him. He is going to be someone special. He is going to grow. He is going to learn and develop. And he is going to do things. He is going to teach. He is going to heal. He is going to bear witness to his father, his father, God himself. And more than that, he is going to die. He is going to die in darkness. We know um, 30 some years later, in the middle of the afternoon, everything becomes dark again. But that's not where the story is going to end. There is going to be a dawn, the light coming back in victory, and he is going to rise again. And in so doing, he is going to be the work, he's doing the work of your salvation. He is going to transform you from a broken, obscured, useless vessel his blood is going to clean you, and he is, it is going to restore you, and it is going to make you capable again of holding and shining forth that light of God's glory here in this world. You are going to become a little bit like him if you follow him. So that is the message of Isaiah 9, of Luke, we can be filled with a light that is not our own light. The, um, the Gospel of John, uh, if you would like to read more about light, read the first chapter of John. It's the Christmas story in a very different way. It's from this perspective, looking at it as the light of God coming into the world. Just one verse, John 1, chapter 9. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. That is the light that is for us. So this Christmas, well, and actually beyond this Christmas, every day, let, let's shine with God's glory. Because when we shine with God's glory, when we let that light in, then others may be drawn to that light. <coughs> light attracts, light draws also. And you can say, okay, look, I, I cannot shine. <laughs> I'm an ordinary person. 
I follow Jesus, but I am not going to shine with the light that the angels shone with, the, the blasting out of the light of God's presence. My light, it is a small light. But think of this, another image from Christmas. That day when we were in London and um, we, we were trying to stay awake and trying to keep going in the darkness, we went to look at the Christmas lights, which are very pretty. Now, Christmas lights, the ones that uh, attract us, they are not the garish, bright lights of a spotlight, are they? They're quiet lights, warm lights, small lights in many ways. But those lights, we are still drawn in. We find them beautiful. We find them attractive, and we want to go closer and know more. Those lights, those Christmas lights, can be you and me. The very story of God, as recorded in his word, it begins in darkness, doesn't it? The very first couple of verses of of Genesis, darkness covered the face of the deep. But God said, let there be light. And there was light. And we know also that God's story ends, the Bible ends, in light eternal. In Revelations 21, 23, um, in John's vision, he sees the city of God has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. That is light eternal. Let us walk in and shine forth that light, that light of God's glory, now and forevermore. Amen. We um, will now have our prayers of intercession. I ask Toby to come up. Please join our prayers of intercession. When I said, Come, Lord Jesus, please respond by saying, and hear our prayers. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Almighty God, we rejoice at the birth of Jesus, the giver of hope and peace. We give thanks for the obedience of Mary. Help us to have the same faith that we may seek your light and walk in your way. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Glorious God, we pray for our city and all nations. Help the leaders of the nation to stand in your light, that they may seek the common good and work towards a just society. For all, may your peace be manifested in every corner of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayers. Merciful God, we pray for the church. May us both to share your light with others. Open our heart to remember and care for the lost, the little, and the least. May our ministry offer your gifts of grace and hope. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for individuals experiencing brokenness, sickness, fear, and distress. May your light surround them. May your peace comfort them. May your love flow through them. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. As we offer them in the name of Jesus. Amen.